Hey everybody, it's Kayla back again. I'm going to be answering another subscriber question today. My subscriber wanted to know my opinion on the automation of finance jobs, whether or not that is a possibility now and in the future, and my overall opinion on automation and AI artificial intelligence. To get straight to the point, do I think finance jobs will be automated? Yes and no. It really depends on what area of finance you work in and what function you do in your job. Say you are an underwriter for an insurance company. Your job is much more at risk than say an investment banker. Automation is something where I feel like it's going to take a longer time to reach the finance sector than it would be to see in something like a factory. For anybody that follows business news, you might have heard a couple months ago at this point where Coca-Cola, their manufacturing plants are going to be automated. They're going to be using all machinery and no human power behind uh, the stuff that they make in their plants. And it was something like 3,000 people in Texas are going to be losing their jobs to uh, Coca-Cola automating their manufacturing process. So the lower you are on the totem pole on the company, it is more likely that your job will be automated as well. If you're somebody who wants to pursue high finance and you're worried about the automation of your job, I would tell you if that's something you want to pursue, I wouldn't really worry about automation of your job. It'll probably be a very long time before automation really affects whether or not you will have a job in finance or not. I think it'd be an interesting point to bring up that automation would be good to see in high finance so that the hours could be cut back. And I often get asked why people in high finance are expected to work so many hours. Are you really busy working all those hours? And the answer is no, you're not busy working 80, 100, 120 hours a week when you're in those kind of jobs. The reason you're getting paid that kind of money and you're working 80, 100, 120 hours a week is because the banks, the companies that you work for, they want you to be on demand 24-7 almost. They're paying you to be available to them and for you to be open and willing to be very hardworking and be able to work at any time that they ask you to do something. If they ask you to make changes to a pitch book you better be ready to make changes as soon as they ask you or within like a couple hours. So I really don't see automation happening in investment banking, private equity, uh, hedge funds, or venture capital. Uh, not for a very long time. Not Probably not until most of us who are watching this are dead. Um, <laughs> I do see automation maybe affecting the financial advising world and maybe wealth management, uh, just with the economic factors in America, the way that the financial hygiene that millennials and younger in this country have, people not having as much disposable income or money to invest in retirement or to just put away for the future. I do see it affecting financial advisors and how many financial advisors will be in the workforce in America. Because at the end of the day, financial advisors are salespeople. You need to have some financial background savvy. You need to be able to point your clients in the right direction. But you really are a salesperson trying to get your investors to invest as much as possible with you so that you are able to make more money yourself. With the financial hygiene that millennials and younger have now, I just see there being less financial advisors in the future. Um, along with a lot of millennials, they're using things like Mint, Robinhood, they're looking towards algorithmic trading. So I see millennials taking over their own stock trading needs, their own financial saving needs, and not really going and getting the advice of financial advisors. I see millennials and younger kind of smartening up to what financial advisors do 
and seeing that they're not 100% necessary, especially if they don't have the extra income, the extra disposable income to spend on a financial advisor. I do see automation affecting retail banking. I feel that in retail banking, it's more competitive than it's ever been, more stressful than it has ever been, because once again, you're focusing on sales, uh, getting as many accounts open as possible, getting as much money into your bank as possible, and having your name attached saying, Michael has opened 100 new accounts for Bank of America this month. And, you know, retail banking employees, they're so pressured to constantly push and push and break the glass ceiling as far as sales and numbers go. You know, if those results are not being seen by higher ups in Bank of America, Chase, whatever bank you bank with, they're definitely looking to have less personal bankers inside of retail locations. They're looking to have less tellers and to have as much automation as possible inside the bank so they don't have to pay these people who work as people in retail banking locations. They don't need to pay, you know, their salary. They don't need to pay 401ks. They don't need to pay vacation, etc. All the benefits and they could just implement, you know, like an iPad and some software still make money off of retail banking customers. If you're somebody who wants to get in finance and you are afraid of automation in the future, I would tell you to, you know, really pursue high finance, pursue financial engineering. That's definitely the future. If you're somebody who's already has always dreamt of being a financial advisor, a financial planner, then I would tell you, you are more at risk. You're gonna really have to build your soft skills and your sales skills more than anything and try and find any way to differentiate differ, <laughs> differentiate yourself from other financial advisors, other financial planners. You will definitely see more automation happening in accounting than you do in finance, especially if you talk to the people who've done accounting for you know, at least 15 years, 20 years. What used to take accounting professionals like a whole month to get done, it takes them only a week to get done because of software that is used in accounting now. Do I see accounting getting further and further more automated? Possibly, yeah. If you're somebody like a bookkeeper or an accounts receivable, accounts payable person, I feel your job is way more at risk than a full-blown staff accountant, a CPA, Obviously, if you're somebody in those kinds of positions that I previously mentioned, I would tell you to try and continue to build your accounting skills. If you like only have an associate's degree and you don't have a bachelor's degree in accounting, I would tell you get a bachelor's degree in accounting, go and get your CPA so that you are more secure as more software is built, as more automation of accounting continues to happen. This sun is crazy right now. You're just gonna have to deal with this. What are my general thoughts about automation and artificial intelligence taking over? I think it's gonna be quite a while before AI takes over or the ideas that we have of AI becoming more visible to the naked eye. It's definitely the hottest thing out there right now. If you are somebody who's not in college yet or you have time to change your major and you're interested in computer programming, I would definitely suggest that you get into coding, computer programming, data science, data scientists, data engineers deal a lot with artificial intelligence and automating other people's jobs. I have seen that firsthand. I've seen the code that does that. Um, it's really fascinating. I understand why companies are so attracted to this and putting so much time, effort, and money into it. It's kind of a no-brainer when you're thinking in a, fi in, a, in a business and finance mindset. You know, you put this initial investment into artificial intelligence, into data science, and then it will turn around and benefit you a hundred times fold. It makes sense why businesses, companies are putting so much money and effort into AI. Do I feel like it's good for humanity as a whole? Yes and no. It's not good for the people who don't have access to resources to 
better themselves, to get more education, to learn the skills that they need to be able to get jobs that are currently hot and currently in demand. You know, it's not good for the cashiers that are going to lose their jobs, for the people working in manufacturing plants who are going to be losing their jobs to machines and the Coca-Cola plants. Those people most likely do not have access to education resources or the money to get education resources. I do, I would think it would be really smart for a company like Coca-Cola or any company that will be terminating jobs because of automation to offer education resources to their employees that are going to be losing their jobs, whether they pay for it outright or they offer different jobs inside of their companies for employees. Offering some kind of access, some kind of benefits for their employees to reward them for the time that they have spent working for them in these jobs that are being automated. Whether or not that will happen, I really don't know. It will really depend on how much automation happens over the next handful of years, how widespread people are being affected and what jobs are being affected before people speak up and make noise to get people more education resources available to learn new skills for jobs as they're emerging. If you're afraid of your job being automated, I would tell you to get the skills that are in demand right now for whatever jobs are open or for whatever kind of company that you could start with that kind of skill. You know, obviously like software is super hot right now. Anything with technology is so hot right now with a lot of jobs open. Same thing with healthcare. Healthcare is not going anywhere in America anytime soon. So if you're young or you're looking to change careers and you have the opportunity to, I would tell you to always keep your skills on point ahead of the curve. It's just the way that the world is now. You're not going to have the same job your whole entire life. You're going to have to constantly, constantly learn and update your toolbox of skills. So one way or another, you're going to have to continuously change to meet the demands of the market. I would like to see more automation and progress in high finance where you're not expected to be in the office so many hours, sometimes just twiddling your thumbs waiting for something to do and you're just there to be available for your boss to call you up and say, hey, I need you to do this now, I need to turn around now. You know, I wish there was more to make progress in high finance where young people aren't so, you know, chained to their desks, chained to the office, but truly I do not see that happening anytime soon. Unfortunately, I think more deaths are going to have to be seen. If you look up like uh, investment banking death or financial analyst deaths, you'll probably find new stories where young people in their early 20s have died on the job or at home, you know, they're usually <laughs> down with a ton of caffeine in their system, they're sleep deprived. It, it's really not a healthy environment no matter what age you are. Uh, it's, it's not something that should be done long term. And unfortunately, especially if you're one, in one of those hotbed areas, New York City, Chicago, San Francisco, uh, etc., you are you know, and you're in that kind of career, you are looking at those 80 plus hours a week for a very, very long time. It doesn't end, you know, as soon as you make MD. You're, you're going to be working your, you know, you're going to be working a lot of hours your whole entire career. If you liked hearing my opinions, be sure to give this video a like. If you have any questions or want my opinion on anything else, be sure to leave it down below. If you're not already subscribed to me, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, I'll see you around in another one of my videos. Bye!